The first speaker for the session is uh, Dr. Geeta Dharmati, and uh, she uh, will be speaking on vegan diet. Does it uh, really help? To introduce my co-chair also, if the slides has come, I'll just take a chance to introduce this. Can I have the Dr. Darini Krishnan's slide? Yes, Dr. Darini Krishnan, as we all know her, she's a stalwart in the field of uh, diabetes. She was a past national president for uh, Indian Dietetic Association and a registered uh, dietitian board. She was a chairperson. Mm -hmm. She's also a consultant dietitian at Chennai and she's very well known in media and TV, radio and various uh, other uh, social media platforms. And uh, today we have her, I have her as my co-chair and uh, definitely this session is going to be very interesting with uh, all stalwarts of uh, diabetes and the uh, Indian Dietetic Association stalwarts with us. Can I introduce uh, uh, Sheila Swami also? Sheila Krishna Swami, can I have her slides? Yes, I'm very proud and very happy to introduce. We are all colleagues and we have worked together uh, for the betterment of the field of and paternity of dietetics. So Ms. Sheila Krishnasamy also was a past president uh, uh, of Indian Dietetic Association. She's also a registered dietitian for 38 years in her clinical uh, field. And also she's very well known in her uh, wellness uh, field. And she's trained in India and overseas. She's actively involved in national and international dietetic associations. And she's got so many uh, credits and so many uh, publications to her uh, credit. She has her own uh, YouTube channel, Nutrition Nectar, which gives uh, nutrition knowledge to the mass media. Thank you, Sheila, for being with me. Now, can I Thank have so the much. first speaker, Dr. Geeta Dharmati uh, slides? It's okay, my slide don't work. So Dr. Geeta, of course, uh, very close to my heart and we work together on a many uh, forefronts of uh, diabetes and other uh, clinical disorders. She's a registered dietitian, clinical nutritionist, director and founder of Geeta Nutri Hill. She's also chief nutrigenomic counselor, a gene support. She's also executive uh, member of uh, Indian Dietetic Association at present. Then she's a past chapter president for Pune IDA. Then she's an excellent faculty for CCA. That's a course of integrated dietetics at SPPU. She's also a guest faculty at Symbiosis Institute. So she's also a teacher, visiting faculty. She's also jointly you know, doing the bariatric course and she's a coordinator for this online course with SVT College Mumbai. And she's also an adjunct professor at other university like Tilak Maharashtra University and nutrition department and also a PhD guide. So I welcome you Geeta to speak on a uh, current topic of a vegan diet. Your time starts now. Thank you so much. I'm absolutely humbled to have you three stalwarts at chairperson. So thank you so much. Uh, without wasting time, because this is a very rapid fire session, and I would like to keep my message to the audience, because when Shilpa called and said that, will you be able to talk about vegan diets? Then the thought which came to me that in seven minutes, I have to deliver the crisp and the thought process about what is vegan diet and what take back home message each one of us should have. Does it really help is what we are here to understand in the next five, six minutes. We all look at nutrition as rightly said by the other speaker. End of the day, whatever diet we follow, I want nutrition. My job as a dietitian or nutritionist is to work on the best balanced nutrients of macro, micro and lifestyle modification. So any diet it may be. So if I have to introduce vegan diet, I have to keep portions in mind. And in that vegan diet, I always look at what does vegan diet, if anybody wants to follow, will be a balanced. It definitely says more than five servings of fruits and vegetables. It says every meal will have a whole grain, a whole carb, an unprocessed carb. It also says a good lentil peas, beans as a protein source and some kind of a soy food or a calcium rich food as tofu or soy milk, which is two to three serving. This calorie is almost 2200 to 2500 for a day if we are looking at that portions to contribute to that energy intake. Nuts and seeds, almost 30 grams. 
and good fats, one to uh, almost um, so, uh, 30 percent of the total fat allowance so what does it mean it means yes it gives me nutrition it gives me macros and micros but my worry is different i have to look at positive and the negative point of what it gives me and what it doesn't because end of the day if i am eliminating some food in my diet i have to look what are the challenges in it because i know that my challenge will be more of phytates in the diet which may affect my bioavailability my challenge may be by absorption of these micronutrients of calcium, iron, and other areas of my food. My challenge may I be able to put up to the proteins and a good fatty acid profile. Will I be able to make up to my B12? And how will I look at my fats? So a typical vegetarian diet, vegan diet, if I look at it, it looks like this. People would like to go a gluten-free vegan diet where the wheat can be out, but somebody wants to follow a vegan diet can be a simple way of looking whatever allowance. This is almost a 1600 calorie diet, which has a lot of lentils, fruits, grains, uh, protein intake in every meal. So that's how it looks. But if I look at it, oh, a lot of phytates, a lot of fiber, a lot of roughage. It may be balanced. So little more detailing in just a nutshell I would like to share because how I look at vegan diet, it's absolutely my perspective of thinking about it and I want to sensitize your mind also for the same. Today we talk about bioavailability of each nutrient which we eat, maybe a protein or a fat. A protein is mostly a pedicast or more of dias, which we look at, D-I-A-S-S, which the current 2020 guidelines tells me. And a dias says one gram of protein should have this profile of essential amino acid, which you're seeing in the screen. I won't go into detail, but I would like to highlight, if you look at one gram of protein, it's leucine, it is lysine, it is phenyltyrosine and valine, which contributes to the major part of my one gram protein. And I get it from my food, what pedicast one egg, grains and legumes, grains and vegetables, grain, nuts and seeds, I complement and get it. I know my limiting, I calculate my proteins. My non-veg has 20 grams of protein in one serving, that is 100 grams. But my lentils also 30 grams raw will give me seven grams. But there are limiting amino acids, which I have to keep in mind about lentils. And I need to now look at how can I complement? Friends, this is very important slide for us to learn and understand that if I look at the amino acid profile, I've highlighted leucine, lysine, isoleucine, valine, BCAA, and a lysine. And if you look at the profile, and if you can see on the screen, the lysine of uh, one good quality protein and the lysine of a lentil is quite good, same. But compared to other things, there's not much to lose. It has equal amount of leucine, it is equal amount of valine. So overall, methionine and lysine, and especially the lysine is the protein or an amino acid contribution, which I'm looking at. If I have good amount of lentils, I may be able to make up to my bioavailability of my good proteins or amino acid pool, which I'm looking at. A very interesting paper by uh, Professor Kurpath, who is our own uh, scientist, which has talked about it, our Indian fatty acid profile needs a serious introspection. I would like to draw, uh, draw your attention to a vegetarian and non-vegetarian N6, N3 ratio. We are in era of learning inflammation and lot of challenges with the micronutrient absorption. So if I look at it N6, N3, you will see that my profile of a vegetarian diet has a better N6, N3 ratio when compared to a non-vegetarian diet. Definitely this vegetarian diet has milk in it. It is not vegan, which is being studied. But apart from the component of milk, which may contribute to saturated, I have nothing to lose. Another few important areas of vegan is my definitely a gut flora, SCFS, and good generation of prebiotic. I only have to worry about phytates, bioavailability of my nutrients, because quality of protein can be well taken care of. A lot of research has been done on vegan diets to talk about it as anti-inflammatory, low GI, good fiber, good immunonutrient, and lots of areas. It does work on my gut flora, and I know that when I'm talking about my own health, my gut has to do the job. And I'm sure all the clinicians and dietitians agree with me. Tomorrow's nutrition is all about gut nutrition. And to summarize the whole thing, if I want you to take back home message, vegan is a good diet because I'll be working very good on antioxidants, phytonutrients. My worry is micronutrients, bioavailability. So I monitor, 
I look at B12, D3. I am a very good supporter of milk because I would like the patient or a person to take good milk because that's the best source of bioavailable calcium. But if anybody would like to go on a vegan diet, he has to think about calcium, which has to be supplemented or need to be worked as a bioavailable source, do his bone mass densitometry, work on it, understand whether he's able to absorb the calcium because there's no other way to learn about it. But all this iron, calcium, zinc, if I am able to work on with the bioavailability, my macronutrient profile can be very, very adjacent. Looking forward, fatty acid profile, amino acid profile can be very, very well taken care of with vegan diet, with the micro exception to micronutrients. Thank you so much. I think I made my point very clear in the given time to let every each one of us learn about what is important to look in diet is nutrition. What is nutrition is the bioavailability, the gut flora, and what is important is the micronutrient absorption of iron, zinc, and calcium, which should be monitored if one is on vegan diet. Thank you so much for the organizers to give me this time and uh, uh, allowing me to put my thoughts across. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Gita, yeah. for that excellent and crisp way to explain how does vegan diet help. And uh, you have almost cleared all the myths and given the facts of uh,